Hey everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, I'm going to be talking to a friend of mine named Dave Boyd who runs a YouTube channel, website, Instagram, Facebook, he's on everything, um, but called Nissan Nation Podcast. Um, and this guy's been a huge help to me, so I wanted to shout him out and we had a great conversation. We actually, we talked for about three to four hours. Um, I cut it down a good amount, but it's still a long one, but it is worth it. If you are a Nissan person, you know, everything from Zs to Xterras, we're going to talk about it in this one. So just wanted to kind of kick things off. So if you want to hear more about that, stay tuned. Also, if you are new to the channel and you haven't seen my stuff before, um, I do a lot of Nissan Xterra content. I do a lot of overlanding. I do gear reviews. Um, things like that. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, make sure you click subscribe, make sure you click the bell to be notified when new videos drop, and uh, click the like button if you enjoyed this video, and leave a comment below if you've got some feedback or if you want to hear about something in particular. Um, if you have a question for Dave, let me know, and I'm happy to pass that on. And he will also be active in this chat, I'm sure, too, so let us know. So hey everybody, as I just mentioned on the intro, we've got Dave Boyd with us today from Nissan Nation Podcast. Welcome, Dave. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, no problem. I, thanks for having me on your show a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, I had a good time. So as you know, things have come full circle now, right? So now I, I just the other day, I was like, man, I, I need to get Dave on my show, if you want to call it that, because it's been a little while. We talk pretty frequently, I feel like. Right. But... I, feel, I feel like, though, I should have like the little lion up here, like the Lion King now. So it's the full circle thing going on, yeah, you know? The, the circle of life. <laughs> right. We could try and sing that if you want. No, I'm just kidding. A whole new... No. <laughs> <laughs> That's wrong song. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. <laughs> I don't know my Disney movies, guys. Sorry, I'm a Nissan guy. I, we don't know much. Yeah, that's it's definitely not my forte. I've got two boys, <laughs> so it's like we watched I Am Legend tonight, 7 oh, and what 10. A great, what a great movie, man. And for, for, right right now. The only thing that about yeah. that movie is like the the CG with the zombies or yeah. whatever they are doesn't hold rough. up. But the, the idea of that movie is so great. Yeah. That's, I didn't really, like, I didn't pick it as a result of the current times that we live in, but sure. I, we watched um, I, Robot the other night. Like, I'm bringing him back to all the mm -hmm. old Will Smith movies, right? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I was like, tomorrow we watch I Am Legend, and we watched it, and they were, I was like, oh, shit, this is, like, really close to what's going on right, now. right except for the gas prices when you see that where he's putting the kids on the helicopter and stuff you're like yeah. i forget what i remember at the time watching that going you know and we're all car people so you pay attention we're right. suv especially like a century people so we don't get mileage but we don't know what that is so you pay attention to gas prices and yeah. i seen that and it, back then it was like three something i was like geez this movie dated itself when it came out at the theater yeah. instantly well now gas yeah. is a buck fifty so right right or in some weird. cases they give it to you so <laughs> yeah it's negative and they want you to take it because they can't store it. right right <laughs> so speaking of this crazy time that we're in um have like work personal has the coronavirus like affected you or how, how are you doing with all that <clears throat> oh man i'm getting a chest cold here no it's uh actually actually <laughs> So if you don't know, I am a podcaster slash YouTuber guy, but in my real life, I'm an engineer slash surveyor. So um, I will say it's really not, it's, it's not for me now. Now my wife, she works for Verizon and they, they shoved all their people work, you know, work from home. But for me, like, it's kind of been great. There's no traffic now. So, so when I'm traveling all over uh, middle Tennessee, I, I don't have anybody in my way. Yeah. Generally, I'm in the middle where there's nobody around me anyways. So, you know, it's, it's really been no change for me other than, you know, I see my neighbors walking up and down the sidewalks now. It's kind of strange. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I feel like people go out more now than they ever did before. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, I guess I, I get being locked in, but. Well, there's only weird. so many video, you know, kid, this is a kid's dream right now. It's like, you think, oh man, I just got out of school two months early. Yeah. And I can play all these video games, but kids especially learn real quick, man, that's, there's only so many video games you can play before you got to just go do something. And like you were saying, I've seen more kids out on my street. I didn't know I had this many kids in my neighborhood. So, <laughs> so I guess for that, maybe this has somewhat been a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. I, my seven-year-old just this morning 
Uh, he only wants to play video games. He's obsessed with his iPad and he had to do e-learning. And I, I was downstairs working and I heard him upstairs going, no, I'm never doing e-learning ever. <laughs> and my wife was like, can you come up here? And I was like, <laughs> upstairs, like, you don't talk to your mom like that. You know, that that's right. Happened. And they know dad's footsteps. They, oh, they yeah. definitely, they definitely like, I remember as a kid too, like my dad had a 1977 uh, Chevy Silverado okay. that had, it had uh, glass packs on it. Like he'd in, in, you know, older vehicles, like you were going to have to rebuild them every 50,000 miles. They just, okay. so I remember my dad in the, it, we grew up pretty poor too. So we didn't have a garage and he would rebuild this. The engines were so small versus the inside of the hood. You could shut the hood down. And yep. he would he would be rebuilding the top of this thing in rain and stuff like because it was his way to work. So I remember hearing the the glass packs of that thing coming from a mile down the road. And if I ever got in trouble, it was like dad's footsteps. You know, you knew the heavy sound of, of here comes dad. You better go <laughs> go hide somewhere. So, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's I keep trying to explain that to my wife because, of course, you know, she wants to be like, oh, let's put him in time out. And I'm like, listen. <laughs> it doesn't obviously it doesn't work he's screaming at you so like today i went upstairs and i'm like do you talk like that to me and he was like no and i was like how come and i was like is it because you're scared of me and he was like you're right yes and i was like okay be scared of her too because if she gets mad i'm coming up well, so. well, and, and i know that i know you're you know overland stuff but to wrap up on that I remember one time getting some bad grades in school or i did something i i forget what it was and my mom went to paddle me like this is for you millennials out there. Like there was a time where you could abuse your child, you know, within the law, there, there was a small, there was a, mm-hmm. you know, you could spank your kids. Yeah. And I remember my mom spanking me and I cracked up laughing because, you know, my mom didn't have yeah. the strength of my dad. And so when dad came home, dad had a belt that Dave got on his butt a little bit. And <laughs> after that, if my mom ever did anything, there was alligator. T- I mean, she could just talk to me and there was going to be like, and after that, she never like she knew like oh he's his dad's not gonna not gonna hold up so yeah yeah mine was a wooden spoon it wasn't really a, yeah wooden spoon they still have it too my parents do there's like a chunk that broke out of it on my butt one time like they hit me so hard <laughs> that a chunk of it flew off and they still use that thing and I think they do it just to mess with me like they're like right hey want some potatoes and I'm like oh Fletch you want to get back in line yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, but you know what? It's weird. I like, it works. Yeah, yeah, oh. because it, yeah, once again, I know, guys, I know this is an Overland show, but no, but this is like, but the there is, stuff, right? There is much like, you know, there's give and take in the woods when you take your vehicle out. There, there's lessons you learn, and right. sometimes there's lessons to learn in life, and it's better to learn them when you're five to 10, maybe, than it is uh, yeah. when you're 20 to 30. Sometimes they're worse than getting paddled, right? If you break down in the middle of nowhere and have to walk 20 miles out of the woods to find some help. Yeah, or so you find out somebody's hacked your bank account and then all of a sudden you have no money. Yeah. I'll take, I'll, take, I'll take a good, good old spanking over that any day. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. So speaking of breaking down, um, just, this is just a quick question, right? Do you prefer hmm. newer or older vehicles? Because you've had hmm. both. I've seen you have brand oh, yeah. new vehicles and then older ones. Yeah, let's see. I, you know, I, I don't know. So, so as a kid growing up, I had way before OB2 and all this stuff where you could plug in and tell your cars, you know, they would tell you what's wrong with it. Um, I would kind of cut my teeth on, on, I got a hand-me-down car and, and I learned to turn wrenches that way a little bit. Now, by no means am I an expert. And out of the two of us on our, our show, Danny is by far, the, the mechanic guy. Um, but I will say there is something nice about plugging that in. Cause my wife's six there right now. She, she texts me and she was on her way home and she's like, Hey, it's got a Oh, four, six, five code or something, something like that. And so I'm instantly on the internet going, Oh, well, there it is. Boom. Easy, easy fix. So I will say there's probably a cutoff date for me of, uh, 97 somewhere in there when uh obd2 when came in (laughs) the laziness of me and the older (laughs) i get the less i want to go out and figure things out so i will say you know relatively modern cars yeah no that makes sense well and i mean like i think when i think of that question i mean like i feel like there are two types of people right like there are people that are like i'm just going to go to the dealership and lease a brand new car 
-hmm. or, you know, maybe those people might buy a two or three year old car. Maybe, but I feel like those type of people even are just like, ew, you know, I don't want that. Right. Whereas like, you know, like, so I, I'm both those people, right? Like I have a 2014 Q50, but then I have a 2005 Xterra, which is like the beast. But I I don't know. I, I think I would say older vehicles because of just my experience in the automotive industry and stuff for a while. And like the ripoff that is new car buying, but Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it just kind of depends on the per- the person, I think, and the mechanical know-how. Probably. Well, there's, there, I will say this, there's very few cars new that I would go just buy new. So with mm-hmm. Nissan, uh, me being a Nissan show, so Nissan has a new Frontier coming out. And it's, you're going to see it within the next couple of months. You're going to see them show it and then it'll be on sale about January next year. Yeah. So that is a vehicle that for one, I, the Frontier has always been the, my favorite truck, the midsize yeah. truck. So I, I just, I leased a Titan, Fletch, you had seen it. And yeah. the lease is up and I turned it in and the full size truck, which I've owned several full size trucks, but in my age now, I feel like I just don't need a big vehicle like that. So, yeah. so the, the only vehicle, there's only a couple vehicles like that. Maybe, um, oh gosh, let's see. Uh, maybe the new vet, even though, you know, I'm a Nissan guy, uh, the new vet would maybe if I had that kind of cash, I'd go, oh, I might own that one, but yeah. yeah, no, or Lamborghini, something, something. Sure. But, but no, I'm, I'm a two to three year old car guy. Let, let somebody else take that depreciation and, sure. and I'll, I'll kick in. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, I, I've always had like a weird love hate with vets. Like I just, like if I could pick any vet right just this minute, I think I would get like a late model C6 Z06. Like really? That would be the one. Because I'd heard the like, Z06, the, the, the there really wasn't a major upgrade from the five to the six. Well, so there was a, a decent power bump, but it's still mm-hmm. an NAV8, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the electronic controls got so good on it. So I rode with a guy in, when I did autocrossing in the past that had a C6 top trim, whatever that is sporty. I don't know. Right. right. At all. Um, well, it was a Z06, but um, he put on the, the traction control, like the sport track mode or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we went around this course and like, I had done it in my Z and like, I felt pretty good about it, but like I had everything to say, like I turned off BDC and everything Sure. in the 350Z just cause like it just kills all the fun. And so just having full manual control is a lot of fun. I got in this thing and it was violent, but it was, <laughs> awesome like right right it was just like it and we got done and i was like you are an amazing driver and he's like no i'm not it's the car and <laughs> right. i was like holy shit, like that's amazing right well and, and a lot of the modern lamborghinis now you know it's like these people that are setting they go to their local track and set all these records and you're like it, it's it's a computer now you know yeah. you just you just happen to instead of uh being the inner button you're pushing this accelerator and that's it right yeah yeah, I just like, I think I just like, like the meaner and more raucous and like abnormal, the better. Like, mm-hmm. I'm the type of person that likes to like take my like glass packed, you know, 72 Datsun 240Z with a Chevy V8 crammed into it into like rich people's neighborhoods and just like idle and floor it all around and just piss them <laughs> off. So, anyway. Well, but with sports cars, it's hard to put a roof rack on them too. That's true. Yeah, that's why you have to have both. Like, just, <laughs> of course, of course. Car. <laughs> who has one car that's weird that's true because i have let's see well i just lost the titan it went yeah. back let's see i've got the juke now i've got two xteras and then there's a centra sitting out there so yeah you just can't have one car yeah it doesn't make sense one for every day yeah it's like um, shoes yeah so as you just mentioned you have a bunch of nissans right you run a channel called the nissan nation podcast why are mm-hmm. you so loyal to nissans and like what is your experience like i'm the same <clears> way but I'm curious what your story is as to how you got into it and why you love them so much. Well, first off, I'm cheap. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. No, so so my my thing, I grew up in a GM household, like like through and through. My dad was a Chevrolet guy. As I mentioned earlier, he had a Silverado. He's had a bunch of GM products. Uh, we had Buicks growing up as a kid. And that was that was the thing. You only did that. Well, I'm from Ohio. I, I, my parents in the seventies, I'm dating myself here, but they moved to middle Tennessee to a town called Murfreesboro, just outside of Nashville. Well, in 79, 80 Nissan decided they wanted a manufacturing plant in, uh, in North America. So they chose a at the time it was a one light town 
Smyrna, Tennessee. I mean, literally it had one light and it never worked. And they chose that's where we're building our, our plant. Yeah. So growing up, my sister bought a little hard body. Uh, I think it was a 90 hard body. And I just liked that vehicle. My brother had a, a an 89 S10. And that was back when you lowered vehicles, you know, you drop yeah. them and all that. Sure. Um, but the Nissan to me, the quality difference was night and day. Yeah. Like it was like ridiculous how much like I would get in, you'd shut the door of the S10 and not that, you know, it was still a new car, yeah. but for something about the, the, the hard body just felt solid. So there was yeah. that my parents did in 84, they bought a Sentra <laughs> and it didn't last a year with my dad and he went back to gym. I don't know what it was about oh. it. You know, they're little commuter cars. It, it just wasn't much there. So yeah. growing up, all my friends and family have worked for Nissan. I've seen the impact that it's took this one like town and, and now the, that town is well over a hundred thousand people in it. Uh, I've seen the impact that, that big manufacturing like that can do. And then the, a lot of the, the brands that I used to like, like we were talking vet, man, I, I was a vet kid growing up. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I felt like the, the American manufacturers lost touch. They just yep. they knew people would buy stuff. And they didn't innovate much until really until Ford decided they wanted to sell a lot of F-150s, you know, update them every year and a half. There was boring. They, they just, yeah. there was nothing there. And you, you seen like the value you would get from a Nissan versus some of the, what you would pay. It just, it, it made a lot of sense to me. Now too, with the plant being here, there's a lot of used Nissans here. Right. So, yeah. so, so when there's your markets flooded, the value you like, you can find bargains on those, on those vehicles. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and I know this is a long winded story, but oh, you're fine. so let's see, I had my first import vehicle was a Honda element. Yeah. I bought it in 2005. Before that I had like an F two fifty, and, and you're run. I had a Volkswagen too, which I would never put anybody in a Volkswagen. Like mm. that was a nightmare experience. Two years of that Jetta. And it was, Oh my God. So, I bought this Honda Element, love that thing. And still, I will tell people that little Honda Element was one of the most fun and practical vehicles I've ever owned, like yeah. ever owned. But I got married. The wife decided, hey, you know, we like going to the lake. Why don't we, we want to buy a boat. Well, my little Honda Element wasn't going to carry a jet ski, let alone a boat. <laughs> right. So, so it was like, well, looking at pickup trucks. So right around that time, 2005, uh, the new frontier came out and I remember seeing one right after I bought my Honda and I did that quick head snap of like, what, what is that? <laughs> it just was so different from the previous one. And it just, it was a little bit bigger. And I remember seeing that truck going, wow. And now I'm lucky too. I see a lot of prototype vehicles before they hit the market because of where I'm at. They do a lot of testing and I seen these vehicles and I was like, I think, I'm going to buy a Frontier. Now, once again, I said I am a little cheap. So I, there was one, on, a used one, a year old one on the, on the lot. It was two-wheel drive. It was a four-door. Went and got it. We loved it. We took it on all kinds of little camping trips and adventures. Nice. And it had the roof rack, you know, like the Xterra does. Yeah. And one, let's see, Good Friday, April, I think it was April 8th, Good Friday of 09, we had tornadoes hit my town direct hit to my office killed my truck and and let me tell you when a, when a tort and sadly there was two people that passed away from it out of if you ever seen the destruction yeah. there should have been more we were very lucky and unfortunate for that it was a, a mom and daughter so it was very unfortunate for that but when that happens everybody's looking for a vehicle and so me being a land surveyor i knew i wanted four-wheel drive and i really wanted an suv this time so I started scouring around and I'd always liked the Xterra and I, when they came out in 99, I was like, Oh, those are really cool. <laughs> um, I found a white one and it was a, let's see, it was a, what year was that one? Oh gosh. Oh, one. Okay. So it was pretty old. It was pretty old at the time, but uh, the, the economy in 09, if y'all remember was slowing down. Yeah. I was trying to be practical and like, Hey, let's not dump a ton of money. And I got it like seven grand. Nice. Fell in love with that. I found a, a forum. And I'd been on forums with the, the element, but for some reason, the, the Nissan forums really kicked in. It was like a family. And it's not like Facebook now where like people would just 
tell you to go search or they're just rude to you forums there was for some reason there's anonymity there was a a a picture of something that wasn't you and people were just a lot nicer so i fell in love with these forums and it just grew from there and i i ended up starting xterra nation and then i ended up like starting frontier nation and i i pass those off to to new people and then i got into podcasting so i, I know that's long flesh and you're probably like dude no, it's too much. Um, <laughs> but just it just the love of it grew and then nissan moved their headquarters here so i started getting more connected with the inside information and it between that and just loving their products it just it grew from there yeah no that's that's an awesome story like that's i remember when my wife and i first started dating like at, <laughs> When, when I was supposed to propose to her, I, I told her I didn't have enough money to buy a ring. And then like within a month, I bought a 350Z and I put $1,000 down on it. There was a cat back exhaust on it. <laughs> and then I showed up at her house. I'm like, check out this car. And she started crying. And I was like, Shh, okay. How old were now you? Gotta, How old were you? Now I got to get her a ring. I 23. Oh, okay, so you're still kind of like, young and didn't understand the, the subtleties. I was just out of college, yeah. It was so strong that when we got married, like, a couple years later, I won't show them on the screen here, but, like, if you see my wedding pictures, there's one of, like, the back of the Z with the Nissan hamburger logo. All right. Oh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, it said my internet connection was dropping. Um, with the hamburger logo with the bouquet sitting on the spoiler of the 350Z and then us <laughs> blurry in the background. It's like the Z is in That's total classic. focus. We're blurry in the background. That, right. Those are my wedding pictures. So like, and you picked, um, you had to pay I've for that picture, right? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was uh, most of the pictures have the car in them. We drove away in the car, so yeah, it was. Uh, it's you know, it's fifty fifty. Wife I, to I'm, Nissan. So I'm kind of like hope that. That I have that title. <laughs> well, I'm kind of like that too because my wife who was from Detroit, she came here to middle Tennessee to go to college and, and we found each other and, you know, you know, the classic story, but she, um, she was, her parents are hardcore GM people. They retired from GM man. The, yeah. it's, it's, it's either the, the union and then there's GM, but ultimately it's like their love is, uh, I can't place it, but GM give them a nice it did they gave them a nice living and and they yeah. they've done well with that but sure. so the idea of a foreign car especially if, if you ever drive through detroit you do oh, yeah. not see very many import vehicles like yeah. you know it's weird it, 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 it is like a ghost town of like imports yeah. so i somehow she you know she liked the xterra i bought and and the idea of we were going to start a family and she wanted a four door car and she had a little cobalt and I was like, well, you know, take a look at the, the, the Nissan Maxima. And she liked it, but she was like, I just don't think I could, I don't want what I'm paying for profits going to another country. It's a very old school way of, sure. of looking at it. Sure. Even though today there are, glo they're global companies. There are no right. American companies for auto manufacturing. It's global. Right. So, so I said, yeah, but this Maxima was built just right up here. the street. Right. Like, our friends and family profited from that yeah. and it, it clicked to her a little bit of like, Oh, that makes, it's like Detroit, my parents, you know, her parents or whatever, they all profited from it. It's, I said, it's the same mentality. So she right. got that car. And so it come time we had our, our, we were having our daughter and I was like, I want to bring the daughter home in my Xterra. And now by this time, my Xterra was lifted, <laughs> like not rednecky, but <laughs> It wasn't classy like the Maxima, you know, to bring your, to bring your kid home in. And she, was, she put her foot down. She's like, there's no way you're bringing our daughter home for her first ride in that Xterra. So I'm with you kind of on the picture thing. Yeah, 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 it's tricky. But the love runs deep, right, you know? Of course. So, cool. So you mentioned, <clears throat> you know, that you do go camping and stuff. I know you're not necessarily like a, an overlander per se, but you're a wheeler, right? You're an off-roader. You know, I – since we've gotten to know each other, you haven't, I haven't had a ton of time to adventure like we used to, but yeah. no, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm a, I'm a hybrid. I'm definitely a hybrid. I'm not the, the dumb redneck that's just going to go tear his stuff up, you know, yeah. load it on a trailer and tear it up. But I'm also like, I like tinkering with things. I like gear. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, RX stare out there that we would take. It's full of overlanding gear. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I, I, I've, 
kind of, I like both worlds. So I don't consider sure. myself one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I've talked about this a bunch in the past, but like labels don't really matter. You know what I mean? Again, you and I have the connection of Nissan, which is great. You like mm-hmm. trucks. You're not just sports cars. I'm kind of both sports cars. I like luxury cars. I like, mm-hmm. I like everything Nissan does because mm-hmm. I'm super biased, but do you have a favorite season? And I'm very, the reason I ask this is because I have certain seasons that I like and certain seasons that I don't. I won't say. Oh, I know we've talked, we've talked privately about these, these That's seasons. true, I guess. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite? Well, seeing how I'm a land surveyor, I hate winter. Uh, And it's it's because like for camping and stuff, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I like to do that. But when you're out five to six days a week in it, you're kind of like the last thing you want to do is go spend your free time in it. And my wife, like stuck in office all the time. And even on hot summer days, I'll come home and I just want to sit in the AC and she's like, Hey, let's go outside. Let's go do something. I'm just like, you do not understand what I, I do all day. Like uh, I'm, I'm with every bug and everything out there, like snakes and everything trying to kill me. And like, I just want to be in the safe comfort of my living room. And she's like, well, I want to go to town, you know? And I don't blame her yeah. much. Like I'm sure she doesn't blame me. I don't want to that, but no, as far as like, I was a boy scout. I know you're kind of, you know, you're, you kind of work with that some. And I remember doing winter camping and it was a bunch of fun. I've yeah. done, Let's see. I, my last, my last big overlanding trip, I went out with rogue overland and Sweet. we drove from Vegas to, uh, to Silverton, Colorado, which Silverton's about 13,000 feet in the air. So you're talking about, and this was in August. So you're talking about going from 120 degrees in Vegas to at night. It was definitely teens at night wow. and it was in August. Yeah. So, so, but I, I did enjoy that. And, you know, we're in rooftop tents and yeah. all, all the, all the fun gear that Overland guys would like, but, but no, I, I like everything, I guess, season wise, probably spring just because yeah. you're kind of coming out of the funk of winter and sure. it's not hot yet. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I would have said historically that I don't like spring because of all the rain. Cause I hate camping in the rain. Cause it's right. like, like you said, right. Like, why would I, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not a wuss. It doesn't bother me. It's just like the whole point was to get out and like have a fire and relax and mm-hmm. enjoy not sitting in a tent in the rain. I could sit in my house and watch TV in rain, you know? Of course. Um, but like I took my boys out a couple of weeks ago and the weather was perfect. There were no bugs. It was like 60 ish. And it was, it was one mm-hmm. of the best trips we've ever had like a month ago before this oh, all nice. got bad. Um, so I don't right. know what to do now. I think spring's pretty good. So, yeah. Especially with kids, you know, with kids, it- it's a, yeah. they're not as uh you get them cold and uh they're a little whiny yeah mine are weird though mine don't feel cold really like, yeah it's it's disconcerting like we went on a cub scout camp out and it was like in like october or something like a year or two ago and it right? got down to like 20s probably and i'm i'm pretty much a winter camper like i like camping in the winter a lot but mm-hmm. I was there and I was all dolled up and I had my wool blanket and my zero degree bag on and all this stuff. And I look over at my 10 year old, who was probably nine, eight or nine then. And he's like stripped down to his underwear, <laughs> leg hanging out of the sleeping bag, arm hanging out of the sleeping bag, head off the pillow, like <laughs> on the ground, just passed out. And I'm like, oh, what? Wow. <laughs> like, I was right? Fine. Well, yeah, because so, when, in that yeah. same trip, I was telling you in, in Colorado, like, Danny, my, my partner, he's from SoCal, man. He's, and he's used yeah. to, to eighties, nineties, like, like sure. and he doesn't winter, like their winter camping is much different than here on the East coast, you know, like 70 degrees. And all of a sudden it's like, Whoa, I can't be out there. So yeah. yeah. And I, I always keep being a land server too. I always keep hot hands and those things just uh-huh. as an emergency. And I took some out there with me and I threw it in my sleeping bag because yeah. I didn't take any of my own gear out there. So it was a crapshoot of what I was getting. <laughs> Yeah. And so I was comfy, man. And Danny that first night was, he had, he had a scarf on his head anywhere he could cover himself. And, and he was, I, and I was like, Hey man, next night I was like, here's some, some hot hands, throw it in your sleeping bag. And after that he was cool. And guess what? He just came back from another trip where they were in the four corners there in New Mexico area. Uh-huh. And it was cold as could be. It was February. And guess what? He took with him a bunch of hot hands. Yeah. They're great. Right. Yeah. Those things make a huge difference. It's amazing. Cool. So we can kind of combine these next two questions, I think, because they're kind of the same. You've kind of talked about it, but first four by four vehicle you owned slash um, 
how'd you get your start in off-roading, right? Like they're kind of the same thing. Hmm. Well, let's see. Um, my start was due to my profession because uh, being a land surveyor, I'm, there's logging roads I'm always have to go down. And I cut my teeth, believe it or not, on a two-wheel drive. Well, see, I cut my teeth. My first survey vehicle was a 89 Geo Metro hatchback. Oh, and God. I, I wow. kid you not. I, and I took that thing in places, you know, it was a little three-cylinder car. Yeah. I had no business being off the road at all. Right. I took that thing places and not being a dumb kid, but just I had places to go. And a work vehicle for me is a work vehicle. Like right. I, I, I don't purposely tear things up, but I'm, it's a work vehicle. Okay. So I would take that thing to creek crossings. I kid you not. I, I, I was kind of done with that vehicle, but the next vehicle I got was a little uh, Ranger, a little two wheel drive Ranger. And, and why the company at the time I worked for, kept buying two-wheel drive vehicles i do not know <laughs> yeah. because because the guy i worked for was an older gentleman and he had done this for 40 50 years it's not like he didn't know what we do right. and but that that five speed and that ranger taught me how to pick lines because you had to plan especially if you're going up a, a pretty steep incline you had to plan your trip before you got there because you knew you were going to be bouncing a little bit and going yeah. and then after that it was a f-150 it was a 97 F-150 uh, long bed, king cab. And the worst thing, the longest thing in the world you'd ever want to take through woods. <laughs> but it had a horrible, the, I, I forget what it was, like a 4.6 or 4.8, a small block V8 in it that had no power. Jeez. But it had a great four-wheel drive system in it. And after that, I was just like, there's no way I can ever go back to not having a four-wheel drive vehicle. Like, and I've told my wife, because we do get a lot of ice and weather here in middle Tennessee. I was like, we always have to have a four wheel drive in a fleet now. There's just no way around it. Yeah. Wow. Makes my cat's sense. decided he wants to be a part of the video, I think. Nice. Hey, that you cat. can't drink my whiskey. That's mine. Oh yeah. That's, that's a no go. <laughs> I don't <Right>. share that. <laughs> so we kind of talked about it a little bit. Mm hmm but I mean, I know you have multiple cars. What, what would you say is your favorite now? Like I, I was going to ask what do you drive now, but what is your favorite, I guess now? Oh gosh, <laughs> that, that could change day to day, honestly. Yeah. Um, I, my Xterra has always been, I've had two gen one Xterras. My first one was a 2001 and my current one is a 2000 kind of my, my personal play truck. Sure. And, um, when that thing was stock, I, I had so much fun in that vehicle. Um, and, and I hate to see when people go and buy like, especially a Wrangler or something, and then they take it to four wheel parts and they throw $30,000 at it. And it's a badass vehicle. Don't get me wrong, but they right. never learned how to drive it. Yeah. And so, so I'm big on any vehicle I buy and I don't care if it's something I've already had. I want to go take it stock and, experience what that vehicle can offer me before I modify it. And then uh, that way you know what you're mod, you know how you're modifying that vehicle. So I, I want to say my gen ones were my favorite, but my juke right now, man is, is, <laughs> is it, yeah. And I've had, I've had real sports cars, but yeah. this juke for some reason right now has my, it has my heart right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I've, I've always, you know, <sighs> When the Jukes first came out, I was like excited. And then like, I was like, hey, all my friends, look at this cool, weird, quirky car. And they're like, you're an idiot. That thing's <laughs> ugly, it's the worst. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, oh, what do you, but secretly like deep down, I've always been like, you guys are wrong. Like those right. things are cool. I know, I mean like, you know, there's everything that it's like, I look back at like old Nissan POWs and stuff, PAOs. If you're mm -hmm. not familiar with that and you're listening to this channel, just go Google Nissan POW. Um, but they're like, it's like, I, when I go back and I look at those cars, I'm like, now I understand a lot of the design choices that Nissan has made. It's like a heritage right. play, right? Like, oh, sure. those things were quirky and weird as hell, but they were so cool. Well, and I love that Nissan's always done that. And you, re, you remind me of that by asking me, you know, my favorite vehicle. Now, yeah. I will say the, the vehicle, my all-time favorite SUV that I've not got to own yet, and I will have one one day, is, is the last generation Patrol. Yes, I knew you were going to say patrol. I was like, the, um, patrol. the in, in my Australian people always get in my ass about not knowing the body code of this thing. Yeah. But, but right before it went to what we call the Armada here in the States, you know, they, they now call patrol too. But the yeah. generation before that, 
was the perfect vehicle to me because it was a little bit bigger than the Gen 2 Xterra like you have and I have one. Yeah. But I don't know. Something about that vehicle is it's very um I don't know. It it's it's just very rugged looking. And but yet when you get in one and and I have a friend here in Nashville that was able to import one legally. Oh, um cool. yeah, it's a Brazilian one too. So it is actually <laughs> uh it's a left hand drive. That's cool. And when you when you see your dream V like, and I know everybody has like, you know, you throw me in a, a, a Lamborghini Gallardo or something like I'm going to like be excited too. But sure. my dream SUV is this, is this patrol. And I, I tell my buddy Oz with Oz four wheel drive, he, uh, yeah. and he imports these things now like crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm like, dude, if you ever sell that and he's like, dude, you couldn't afford this thing. If I, if I, cause, because there's only like one or two legally in the United States legally right. now, not with Florida license plates, like people try <laughs> to sneak them in. Um, and he's like, dude, there's, you couldn't afford this. And I'm like, probably not, right. but you know, but, right. but I know, I know I've ruined your interview here with that, but, but no, dude, that is my all time. That's probably my all time favorite, favorite Nissan. Yeah. That's like, I want all of them, you know, like I look at importers yes. websites all the time. Like, but I mean, honestly, I think you're 100% right. And going back to that, like new versus old question, like I honestly, if I could have anything, right? Like, because those older ones are more expensive than newer cars. I would have an O2 R34. Like that would be just like, if I could get like a, a, a V-Spec 2 maybe. If I could get that, okay, sure. But that's in midnight purple. Just any R34 GTR. Um, right, right. Any R34 GTR, I'd be fine with. Mm -hmm. And then, like exactly what you just said, like a patrol for my winter vehicle, like mm -hmm. a newer, newer-ish one, like the '80s, '90s ones, like those ones. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh my the god, round, like the round, because, the round light patrols. Yeah, yeah. I think like those it, are six. No, I, I won't. I don't even want to say because you're 50, 60 grand, I mean. probably. Yeah. 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 Um, like, can well, you imagine year round? Like, everyone would be like, "What the hell kind of car is that?" <laughs> right. Like, no exactly. It. It'd be so. Well, so cool. I have a I have a good friend here in, in my town who was able to. He was one of the first importers of the Skyline. It's a GTS. T. It, I, I get all the numbers on that even mixed up. Yeah. The but he he was the second. Uh, he was the the second person to import one legally in the United States, okay. and and I, I you can go on my podcast I, on the audio side. And I've interviewed him um, in, around episode eighty ninety somewhere there. Okay. And dude, when you sit in that car, even and you're talking about a car from nine, I think it was in ninety three, okay. uh, because they didn't make a GTR that year, and this is the only reason he imported this one. Yeah, um, some of those cars like a, especially ones we can't have. Like right. I, I'm sure your audience is global and there, there, there's probably certain things. There's probably somebody in India that sees a Chevrolet Cobalt and is like, that Whoa. is my dream car. Right. I would gladly send you about 15 of them because <laughs> it was one of the worst cars in the world. And maybe the Japanese say some of these cars that we want here are like, why would these people want these cars? Right. But probably. definitely like when I seen this car in person, I was just like, oh my God, it's only a skyline, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, but to know that, the potential for it could have been a gtr but yeah. i don't even need a gp gtr fletch like you give me that skyline gtse i i'm perfectly yeah. happy because it's a fast car still yeah it makes a good sound yes and you yeah. throw some actual nismo and my buddy is that he's a time period guy too so if he puts anything on it it's time period correct. Correct. so any nismo has got that weird 80s looking way they used to write nismo like the yeah. steering wheel and he like, I think yeah. the steering wheel, he paid about six or $700 for just because wow. it's time period. Correct. Wow. So, anyways, cars are expensive guys. If you haven't learned this yet by watching these channels, cars are expensive. Yeah. I'm waiting for the day when like companies just say, Hey, we really like all your content. We're going to give you one of those. Well, let me ask you this. So, so <laughs> being an SUV guy and, and you were, you were talking about, uh, watching, um, Oh, I robot. So it's in the yep. future. Well, right now, Westworld. I don't know if you pay attention to any yeah. Westworld stuff. Westworld. Are you caught up kind of current episodes? I think or, I'm or current season? episode two of the current season. I'm, I'm a few well, behind. Usually future video or futuristic TV and movies, sometimes they nail it. Like uh, what was the Tom Cruise movie? Um, 
what, uh, minority what are, report. Yes. So, so if there's some car stuff you see in there, like they definitely had futurists come in and I, I've read magazines on this where they were like, Hey, this is kind of where it's coming. Yeah. Westworld. Now, if you look at the electric vehicles they're showing in the yeah. way that, you know, Tesla wants to go rental basically, or you just buy, you buy a yearly subscription and then a car when you yeah. dial it up shows up. Westworld right now is very interesting. If you watch how like these weird glass SUVs, yeah. they're just like, they're just like capsules show up, man. So can you imagine overlanding like where <laughs> with that kind of stuff? That would be cool. Take oh, me and there like was, the Rivian. And there might be where you're at in the episodes where the guy drives a gasoline vehicle and he's like, do you even know how to drive one of these things? And I was <laughs> like, Oh my God. Cause I can see that definitely. Yeah. All right, Dave. So tell us about your mods. Like, um, any of your vehicles it doesn't have to be the trucks or you know it could be the juke if if that's your favorite vehicle that you modded but what are your favorite mods that you've done to any of your vehicles well man i i have so many jason that's it's a it's a tough one um i used to think just modding one vehicle was was you know expensive and time consuming but then my wife decided she had to have an xterra so yeah. that took that project on and now i have project juke that we've been doing and uh i'm trying to do all three at once but I don't know that it's a tough one because for one cars and cars and trucks are different. Right. Like, you know, cars, you generally, I'm modding it to go faster or hand, better handling trucks. And what we do in overlanding and, and off-roading, it's not necessarily to go faster. It's, it's <laughs> to maybe rock crawl something a little better, or you're throwing a cool tent on your truck or, or things like that. So yeah. it's, it's it, I guess this will be a two-parter. So my, <laughs> probably my favorite mod I've done is on my 2000 Xterra. I did a solid axle swap on it. So for those that may not know, it came with an independent front suspension. It's great. I loved it, but I, I was maxing out anything it could do. I, I started the, the, uh, the, the expense of each trip was getting too much because I was just putting it in too much. And I wasn't ever going to back down with that vehicle. So I decided to uh, go dump more than the vehicle is worth <laughs> to, to modify it. And I, I literally, I could, I could part my vehicle out now and make more money than if I sold it. Like, yeah. it's, it's a joke. But so I took a, a, I took a Dana 44 out of a Jeep Gra Grand Wagoneer. And I put a, a three-link suspension under it or four. I, sorry, the whiskey's kicking in, Jason. <laughs> um, but anyways, I put a solid axle suspension under it and instantly I put 35 inch tires on it. Sure. It was so different and so much fun, but I instantly <laughs> knew with that vehicle that now I've taken it from where I thought I was at a 10 to now I'm like at a 25 with what that vehicle <laughs> could do. So that's sure. that one. And yeah. once again, that, that cost that cost more than the vehicle is literally worth. So now I've got the juke which I've been working with Z1 uh, off-road a little bit and I, I'm going fast now. So, yeah. so there's that, there's that part of it of, of, you know, putting a cat back exhaust or, or uh, intake on it. And, and I've got plans for wheels and tires. And so, but that's a whole new, it's a different level of fun. Right. So I, it, I know that's a tough one. It's a two parter sure. really. Yeah, no, that's, and that was kind of the intention, right? Cause like I've always felt that way. Like we said earlier, you know, you can't just have one vehicle. So like that's, I like in the summer to have something that's good looking and sporty and relatively luxurious and fast and low and you know, like the exact opposite. Right. But then the way I look at it is it gives you like something to look forward to each half of the year. Right. Like in the mm -hmm. summer, I'm like, Oh, I can get the, the nice car out, the fast car out and go enjoy that and look cool in my fast car. And then when winter rolls around, I'm like, Oh my God, I get to drive the four by four, you know, and go right. through the snow. And, and yeah, so it's every season is a fun season if you have more nice. than one car. Nice. So, yeah, modding yeah, I is recommend, I recommend having one more car, more than one car, people. Uh, like yeah. you, you wouldn't just have one pair of underwear, right? right. <laughs> so you got to have more than one car. And here's the thing too is like, I just feel like people are missing the boat on it because like I could have gone out and bought a new Infiniti Q50, right? Mm -hmm. And I could have spent 40, 45, 50 grand on that thing. And I can have that one car or what I did was buy like a four or five year old Q50 that looks the same as the new ones. Mm -hmm. Sure. It has the three seven instead of the 3.0 T, but you know, I have 330, 328 brake horsepower and they have 300. 
Sure, you can throw a piggyback on the newer ones and get 100 horsepower, sure, sure, 400 bucks, that's right. But I've got this great looking, luxurious, you know, pimped out car, and then I've also got a, my Xterra, and I'm still probably at 30 grand for both of those cars combined. Right. right? So right. that's, people are missing out by leasing cars or by buying new cars and not being able to modify them. In my right. Opinion. It's it's like a, there's an analytic for it somehow. There's a value to fun ratio or so, something like that, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. Um. So what would you say the coolest thing you've ever done has been in a vehicle, whether it's racing or off-roading or like, what's your favorite, most fun, either event or type of thing that you've ever done in a vehicle? And don't say made babies. <laughs> no. That could no, be I, an answer. I, I can't confirm that I've made those there. So <laughs> um, I, uh, let's see. I will say, being an east coaster like uh, us on the east coast we think we know what adventuring is but we really don't to you get out in land that you can you're basically bml land where you can just basically go anywhere you want like you're not going to see a soul for as many days as you want to that's like different because i'll go to like we have a, a an event a nissan event i put on called went windrock and it's fun. We go off-roading. It's 76,000 acres of off-road land. So it's huge. It, it, it's, it's great. But guess what? Five minutes away from there is a Walmart. Yeah. So, so like you never, you never get the experience of the, I'm so, I need to prepare so much that, that I'm not going to see a store for a while. Yeah. Um, so when I went out in 17, I went out to, uh, like I said earlier, I, I've, flew into Vegas and we, we did a week long trip driving from Vegas, mostly back roads, by the way, too. It wasn't just taking the highway to go there. So we did, we did uh, black bear pass and, in uh, Imogene and, uh, and iconic trails for the URA area stuff that like black bear, I think is the most overrated thing ever. Hmm. Uh, but to see that town from, from the top of that mountain as you're coming down doing the 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 switchbacks is amazing because yeah. you're surrounded by mountains it's just beautiful i went there in august and there's still snow on the ground uh because the especially for that area like the the adventure in time frame is like july to august like the, it's so limited when you can get in there before they start getting their snow again um but we did that and so that whole trip let's see you know, so we, we went in final day, we did Imogene, which is really cool because you're going through Imogene's one of my most favorite trails because you're going through old mines. You get to see yeah. history that we, us East coasters don't, don't get to see. And we take right. a, this for granted too, because we see green all the time. There is <laughs> not a lot of green out that way. Um, <laughs> but so we took from, from Ure and we drove to Moab all back roads and we camped out in this middle of nowhere above Moab, uh, probably 40 miles from Moab, but it, it was up upper plateau. Okay. And I did a, I did a podcast. I mean, this is the most, they'll, nobody, I can guarantee you, nobody's doing a podcast where I did one <laughs> and, and we rigged it up through uh, inverters and, and I recorded the show with Rogue Overland. And that morning, Danny, Danny had to get back to LA and now okay. we're in Moab. Jeez. So, so we 4:30 a.m. or 5 a.m. We're putting the rooftop tent back in Danny's Frontier. We're we're getting it. And Danny is like a rally driver. Danny's an off-road desert racer. He loves that yeah. stuff. So he's switched back and through all these hills. We're trying to get to Moab. He's like, dude, I got to get a coffee before we really. <laughs> start. Like, cool. I hadn't been into Moab in a year. I was like, anytime I can see Moab, I'm I'm excited. Sure. So we're we're our eyes are still like got the sleepy eyes and and all of a sudden out of nowhere we come around a corner and there's a bear huh. now i i didn't know there was bear in that area but huh. i don't hang out in that area obviously this little little bear i want to say it was a little black bear stood up and me and danny are kind of driving at it and i'm fumbling i'm literally dude i'm fumbling with my phone trying to get like i've got to get a picture of this <laughs> that bear stands up looks at us and just darts off Danny slams on his brakes and he looks at me like, I'm not hallucinating him. I like, I'm still not really awake yet. I'm looking at him like, uh, did I just see a bear? Because I've seen 
and here in Tennessee, we do have bear. And so yeah. I've, I've been in the mountains or what we call mountains here and, and you'll see them off in the distance, but yeah. I've never about ran into a bear. <laughs> right. And so after that, we, we go to Moab and get our coffees and, and I'm literally, I'm, 85 miles an hour all the way back to Vegas because I had a flight out of Vegas the next day. And Danny literally was from there from Moab to LA that day. And Jeez. I, I look back at that trip just because I was out of my comfort zone. Yeah. I've seen so many things that I'll never get to see again to travel. The million dollar highway in Colorado is amazing yeah. because for those that don't know, it's, it's called the million dollar highway because they pull so much gold out of this area. They, they were, they knew gold was falling out of the, the trucks, dusting the roads. So they call it the million dollar highway. Wow. And to see Silverton where I camped in Silverton was an abandoned mine and you could literally see mine shafts and not, and not like, movie mine shafts like these were abandoned like cool that trip probably sits to me more than anything now i've done stupid adventures i've i've went with a buddy all the way to arizona to pick up a truck in like record-breaking time uh two and a half days i think Jeez. um to go to phoenix and we literally got the truck hit phoenix and went all the way back to nashville like we were we were hauling ass so I've done stupid and I'm about to go to Florida this Friday. I'm going to Florida to do a stupid trip that I shouldn't go do, but it's just the idea of adventure. Yeah. Like, like overlanding guys, you don't, I mean, I know I, I hate overland bound with a passion because I think the guy's a sell, like he's selling people on something that he's just making money off people. And Fletch, I, if he's, you like the guy, I, I don't know. I, this is just my personal opinion. So <laughs> So he has this whole thing of, you know, it doesn't matter what you drive adventure, but I will say adventure is adventure and we'll take the, we're going to pick up a, a frontier that this guy had sassed. He has straight axle put in this and we're driving it back. And so it'll be a dumb adventure. I literally drove to Denver from Nashville, Tennessee. I worked a half a day. I drove, we drove 17 hours to Denver nonstop because he was getting an off-road bumper built by this guy that does custom work. Huh. And I remember being there so tired that I seen the sun. We seen, obviously we seen the sunset. Yeah. I remember in the plains of Kansas, all of a sudden you just see this light And us. Once again, us East coasters, we don't know when there's like 150 miles of visibility. Like we don't know what to do with that. Right. So I told my buddy, he was driving at the time. I was like, do you see that in the rear view mirror? He's like, ah, oh, it must be a car or something. I was like, dude, that is the, you can see sort of the, the roundness of the earth. And you see the sun rising and you're just like wow. in the middle of nowhere. It was the most beautiful thing. So long story short, once again, I, I've done so many dumb trips yeah. all based on Nissan, by the way. Like if I had not got involved with the Nissan brand, I would have never hundreds of people that I know. I would have never got, you know, to know people that I would probably be in my boring little box house, yeah. you know, just Very nine to heavy. five. Yeah, I, I would have checked out when I got home on the weekends. I would have grilled with a neighbor, and that would have been it. But through the Nissan vehicle, the stupid company, <laughs> that I've got to do so many stupid adventures. But Rogue Overland 17, my final answer. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, it's funny because, like, it doesn't have to be, like, so this is a good topic, actually, for all of, like, folks listening that are big into overlanding or new to overlanding, like, I love all my overlanding stuff and like I have had a, gr a lot of great adventures. Like I went to the TWAT, the trans Wisconsin adventure trail, which has an unfortunate, you know, <laughs> um, I've been to, you know, I'm getting ready to do our was right before the COVID stuff, the Daniel Boone backcountry byway, which is going to be awesome. Yeah. They did West Virginia not too long ago. Awesome. And all those trips are awesome. But what I'm really trying to do is recapture some of those exact same things you just talked about. Like when I had my, and I think we've talked about this, but I had a 72 Datsun 240Z mm -hmm. and it had a Chevy 305 small block in it. And I bought that from a kid in Jersey. And I had a buddy who has since passed away. Unfortunately, he was actually crushed by his car. So it was, oh, no. it was awful. Um, he was a Mustang guy, but he had a big Dodge Ram and we had a trailer and we were like, we had this whole plan and we were like, dude, we're going to take this truck with this trailer to new jersey we're gonna leave saturday night we're gonna get there sunday morning so we left at like six on saturday got there and slept for like a little bit 
woke up at eight o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning, met this kid. I mean, this guy was, this kid was like probably like 21 or something. Right. And somehow he had come across this Datsun 240Z with a Chevy V8 swapped into it. And I bought that car off of him and we trailered it all the way back to Indiana and we're back Sunday night. <laughs> and like, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate because now that guy's passed away and like, right. so that was like a really cool connection to make right before. Cause he, he passed away actually a few months later. Um, he was working under his Mustang and he like lived in a, an apartment. So it was like pavement mm-hmm. and he ended up on Jackson. It's like being as safe as he could be, but it sunk in to the pavement. Oh no. Yeah. And it just, the car came down on top of him. So like, but like that story, like that was, I mean, that was probably like 15 years ago. Right. And, that, <laughs> and that's, that's not like, like, you know, a lot of normal people go, well, I went to Disney World one time and uh, right. that, we spent that week there and it was an adventure. And, and maybe for some people that is an adventure of a lifetime, yeah. but, but stupid car based adventures <laughs> sometimes are right. just the best. they sometimes can be way more expensive than they should be just <laughs> right. due to fuel prices. Um, uh, most cars are not the most comfortable thing you want to ride 12 hours in at a right. time. But, but at the end of the day, you look back at the adventures that you had, whether it be me based in Nissan or, or you just based in the overlanding thing or whatever you're doing. Um, at the end of the day, man, when, when my time comes and I, and I pass away, I know that there's going to be people that went, man, I met Dave and he was just an idiot, but man, he had, a, he had a fun time. Like he would just go right. do what, if we said, Hey, let's go to Alaska. He was probably the first in line to ride with me or, or man, the guy helped me out in a, in a, in a pinch, man. He had a part or something I needed or, and that's, that's at the end of the day, that's how I want to leave the world is knowing that we all can do good deeds. You know, there's, we can donate millions of dollars, like for the COVID thing or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's the little, little things that like your buddy helping you just going with you on that trip or whatever that, that mean more to you and, and maybe impact like the butterfly effect that generations down the road, somehow their grandkids or whatever, you tell the story and it, it inspires them to go do it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's funny because that is literally almost the definition of overlanding, right? Where the journey is the actual destination, not the destination itself. And like that is, you know, I mean, I got this car, but I, we found out we were pregnant like two months later and I had to sell the car. So I only had the car for like six months. Right. I still do love that car and I do miss that car because it was <laughs> oh, so beautiful. And just, I mean, everywhere you would drive, people would look at you, people would try and race you. And it wasn't fast. Right. I mean, it was a Chevy 305. It had like 200 yeah. horsepower. Yeah, yeah but it sounded loud as hell and it looked so good. Like, it's so crazy to think that like some little Nissan engineer, you know, Japanese guy back in the seventies was like, here's my car. Yeah. And then like 50 years, 40 years later, you know, like I'm driving this car and people are like, oh, is that a Lambo? Like, you know, like people that yeah. don't know cars don't know. Oh, anything, yeah. Right. So they're just like, that is, what is that? It's so tiny and it weighs like 2,200 pounds. Oh yeah. You see so- if, if for anybody that sees an MG now from the the sixties, yeah. You're like, that's a death trap for one thing. You're like, geez, man, my kid's bicycle would go through that car. But no, it was made of real steel. Yeah. But, but yeah, you see some of the cars from like that. But to me, like the 240Z is still timeless. Yeah. Like, it's so like and I, I, we, we had a chance to interview it and we just could never get the timing right. But there was a, a, a father and son that took a, a, it was either a 240 or 260. Yeah. 280. But they took it to China. And they yeah. did a rally race over there. And they, they literally oh. by Dan, my partner. And for, it's just the timing's never worked out to do an interview. But like, you know, and, and Nissan was, they did a lot of rally racing with that car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's super cool. I didn't lose you, did I? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I know, you know, you're into camping and overlanding and and all that stuff. Do you have like outside of vehicles? So Mm -hmm. do you have like a piece of overlanding gear that is really like something you won't leave home without or something that you love for some reason? Oh, wow. Um, (laughs) I don't think so, man. I, uh, I mean, each truck that I have has been modified and it, it is, even even my kind of rock crawler Xterra, like I keep there's certain overland things that I just keep in it. Whether that particular one, I keep Max tracks with me in that one. Yeah, um, that's a good one. But my buddy, my buddy uh, Kevin Smith, who used to do Smith Overland, they made cargo boxes, okay. uh, or they made 
camping boxes, trail boxes, whatever you want to call them. Probably the little box he built for my wife for Christmas a couple of years back. Like it's special to us for one, because Kevin is a special guy in my life. Um, and two, like it just holds so many cool, stupid little knickknacky overland things. So we That's basically awesome. run we, any overlanding we do anymore is really out of my wife's Xterra. Okay. And so that's always in there and, and, you know, whether it be, we camp on top of, or we cook on top of or whatever, just that little goofy box. And it's not a full bed box. It's only a half, but it's so practical. And yeah. you know, on the trails, like storage of keeping your stuff from flying everywhere means like we we're overlanders. And I think the booming of this industry was because we all like little knickknacky things. And, <laughs> and whether it be, you go get that first little Coleman fan that you put in your tent that kind of keeps it, air circulating yep. to uh, a machete or, or, you know, shackles, whatever, like that little piece of gear, I guess, because I can keep all the stuff in it means a lot to me. And once again, yeah. it's because a, a, a good friend built that for us, especially. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. Like my drawer system for me, I think would probably be it. And it was a good buddy of mine helped me build it. And we, I kind of came up with the idea and then he helped me execute it. And it's like, exactly what you said, right? Like being able to store your stuff and know where things are. And it's just, uh, it changes the whole thing. It's not, right. not throwing, you know, like throwing all my stuff randomly around. Like I have set places and it makes me feel good to know where things are and to know that I've got right. things I need on a trip. So, I mean, I guess you could look at a lug wrench because that, that yeah. might be your most favorite thing is that in a spare tire. Cause I've popped a few tires on the trail. True. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> You can't camp your way off or off a trail sometimes. That's true. Yeah. You've got to be a little bit, you know, handy with a wrench. Right. Cool. So let's jump into Nissan Nation podcast, right? Like, so I know you from Nissan stuff, but then I also know you from the Nissan Nation podcast. And part of the whole reason that I wanted to have you on was because like, you've helped me out a lot in the past, right? And kind of talked about, hey, Fletch drives a Nissan, but he has this thing, all things overlanding. So, um, Tell us, you know, what got you started in your channel? I'm always interested in creatives and kind of like where that passion comes from. So tell us like what got you started doing well, the Nissan Nation podcast. So in 2000, late 2010, I was running a, a forum called uh, uh, Club Xterra or whatever it's called. Or I, yeah, Club uh -huh. Xterra. Yeah. Um, and at the time, like all these forums now are owned by big conglomerates, Auto Guide. They own everything. And okay. And it's, it's, it's not about the community. It's about how much ad revenue can they put on these things? Yeah. So they, they, they upset me. There was a admin that lost access to, I forget, email change or something. And I said, he couldn't get a hold of this company. And I said, I guarantee you at the time I was making light bars for, uh, for Nissan Xterra's. And so you could put your round lights or whatever you're putting on your truck. And I said, I guarantee you, if I hit them up as my company name, they will get back to me like that. They're, that, And sure enough, within five minutes, I got an email, but this guy had been trying for a week. The guy that ran their site for them, free labor, they would not help. And I, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. And with, I'm not, I have no, comp I mean, I, I'm not computer illiterate, but as far as coding or anything, I was, I'm the last guy. If the world was depending on us to survive and I was the guy <laughs> that were going to do coding, I'm the last guy you want doing that. But, I bought a form. I installed it with a, a help of uh, three or four guys like that. We each had kind of individual things that make the whole piece work. And after that, I got a, I, well, I will say during that, I had the idea of doing a podcast or a YouTube channel, even way back then. Mm -hmm. um, just editing software wasn't where it is today. Like I, like if you've got a Mac, it comes with iMovie. Yeah. You may think it's just some cheap program that you can't do much with, but you're, you're way wrong. I know, I know YouTubers with a million subs that still use a basic iMac to do everything because it is very powerful. Yeah. Um, so the plan was always to do a compilation with the forum was to do a video show. Cool. Well, my younger days, I was a traveling musician. So I know audio gear. I know, I know this stuff. So I never could figure out how to edit properly back then so i thought i know how to do audio and once again uh your your uh, garage band perfect yeah. for audio editing and it really by 2014 or so was really like 
stupid friendly. Like, like <laughs> anybody could do it. So my buddy Dan at the time was, uh, he had a company called xteraperformance.com and he was sort of backing out of it. He was wanting to get into racing. And so he just didn't have time to run a, a website and do auto parts. So I said, Dan, let me help you promote your company for a bit. And he's like, sure. I was like, well, come be my, come be, let's, let's try this. And he, he didn't even know what podcasting was, you know, like, like a lot of people still, they don't know what it is. Right. And he, he, our first podcast, if you ever listen to it is, is it's me trying to wrangle in a comedian. Like it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. But so I had this idea of nobody's doing, there was a few audio shows or auto podcasts, but there wasn't many at the time. So by 2014, late December, I'd done the four before podcast a couple of times to promote my event, uh, went Windrock mm-hmm. and Dan over there was like, dude, you need to do a podcast. And I was like, I don't, I, I just don't, you know how sometimes it's scary. If you don't know to make that leap, it's a little scary. Right. And, sure. and that doesn't mean you don't ever make the leap. You just got to sometimes just do it. So I did it and Dan helped me. He's like, here's what I'm using. And I did it and instantly being a musician, I love kind of performing. And this was a new way of performing for a bit. Now, anything I tell you, I'm very passionate about and I believe what I say and and I practice what I preach and so on. So it's not me performing just to be a character. Um, But literally by episode two, I was like, oh my God, I can't stop doing audio. Like this is so much fun. And my buddy, Dan, it took him to about episode six to learn that, oh, this is because he thought it was just like a 15 minute show. I was like, yeah. oh, dude, it's got to be an hour. But but so we did that. We we started having fun. And even back then, I was like, YouTube, YouTube is where I want to be. Um, cars are cars are visual. We can talk all day. And if you strip this for your podcast, you, you know, people go, oh, it'd be interesting to some people. But you start talking about a 240Z and you know, there's some millennials that don't know what that is. There's some millennials don't know what a 350Z is, but um, so the visual part of it kicked in. So by 2015, the podcast by December was doing well. We, I flew to Fontana, California to the, at the time it's called the California Speedway Nissan. There was an event called Nismo. Oh gosh. Can't remember what it was called. Anyways, me and Danny were gonna cover it. Danny had a friend from LA come in and film us. Mm-hmm. And um, like we just had a ball doing it. But once again, two stupid guys that if we it was left to our our devices wasn't gonna really happen. <laughs> the audio stuff, we've done over a hundred episodes. It got it was really fun, but I needed a new, I needed something new, a new challenge. And YouTube has really been that fun challenge for me. And I know for you, we've talked privately, like. Like I think both of us are having a a ball, but at the end of it, just the love of Nissan, um, wanting to be creative within the Nissan brand. I'm not an auto designer. So this is the way that I could be creative with a brand I love. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, And I noticed, you know, I watch a lot of your videos and obviously, like you said, we've talked, you know, privately. poor bastard. Why do you do that to yourself? (laughs) Because you're great and you're helpful. Like I appreciate it. Um, but like I see, you know, you have a lot of DIY and like tutorial information that you pass on, which I think is really helpful to a lot of folks. But like what got you into that versus like, because you, you definitely do like sort of like more like you said, like a show, like a talk show about Nissan stuff. Mm-hmm. But like what kind of pulled you into the DIY section and, and why have you continued to do that? Well, forums for one thing, because if, yeah. you, if you ever crack the code on a new mod, like not out of pride you want to be the first one to get on a forum and then you you, like back in the day when you had photo bucket you'd put your pictures up there and it was just a great resource well youtube is a lot like that except it's video and you don't have some company telling you you know pushing your your data around i mean yeah youtube does but unless you really like piss youtube off they're not going to just pull you for any reason um now, now the stuff that I do, like Danny is real good at DIYs. Once again, Danny was a BMW mechanic for years. Like he has a very technical background. I, out of the two of us, we make a great balance because I'm more of the showman and you put us together and we're like a whole individual. We're like a normal person if you put us together. Um, but there are some things. Watch this. Nah, Danny won't watch this. I'm, I'm not worried. Um, but 
there there are some things DIY that I, I I don't you can't find on YouTube or if you find it it's some guy that doesn't there's a lot of mechanics that I've seen on on YouTube that you know they they crap on Nissan for one thing so they don't give it the time it might need oh yeah don't give me don't get me started on Scott yeah. Kilmer yeah. Um, but there are, but even just like normal mechanics that have little YouTube tutorials they don't always give it the love that it needs and they just like whether it be just something stupid, simple, like changing an air filter or something. Um, Now, as far as my vision for our channel is never to go full DIY, because if you do that, you always get the trolls. They're always going to say, why did you use a 10 millimeter there when you could have used this? Or, you know, why did you use an impact? You're just going to, so I don't want to bring that for one on myself. So I will show me installing things and, and do that. But, at the end of the day, I'm not going too deep into it because I, I don't, I don't need the badness in my life. Uh, now, Danny, on the other hand, Danny loves that stuff, and he, and he, he just <laughs> loves when they they kind of troll him a little bit. But uh, my, I will say my, I'm more journal journalism for what yeah. my part of the channel is. Um, yeah. Like we're, I'm trying to cover more with uh, whether it be the Chicago Auto Show that we covered uh, a few months back, or um, just my inside sources within Nissan. You know. Uh, I know my audience has heard me talk about it for a long time and they're probably like, Dave, shut up. But like having inside sources that will send me things that I shouldn't have, like the new frontier. Like I've seen the vehicle for a long time. Yeah. Um, now the version that I have a picture of, it's probably been, cause my picture is well over a year old now. It's been, it's been manipulated a little bit, but at the end of the day, I have the bones of the vehicle. Um, so things like that are exciting to me to want to get to, to be able to talk about and maybe show people. Yeah. Um, granted Nissan came to me on that one. It's like, Hey guy, don't, we don't know how you got it. <laughs> we really? like, I'm, I'm asked monthly. Hey, Hey, you ever going to reveal where that came from? Cause I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not seeing anybody get fired for something like that. Um, but as soon as I can show that truck, trust me, me and Danny were in debates last night about <laughs> this, about revealing this, this truck. And, um, it's it's both trust me it kills because it would do wonders for my youtube channel to have information like that (laughs) but it's like the new rogue the new rogue uh i've known about that for quite a while um (laughs) there's certain vehicles that i i north american vehicles especially like centra and stuff usually those are some other different name in india or somewhere so those vehicles i don't really care about as much but as far as my channel itself like if we can we can talk about a, a brand that doesn't get a lot of good press especially right now and point out that, hey, these are cars are cars anymore, man. It's not like the, the 1950s where somebody had the, the upper hand on quality in, in one little part. Like everybody makes a decent car now. Right. But so, so I want to highlight Nissan. And that was always been the plan, whether it be the forums or whatever, of, of highlighting a brand that I love. I'm an underdog kind of guy. Yeah. That's why if you that look at my background, like who would have this much Nissan on their wall? Like I'm the craziest guy ever to want to put, I have little hot wheels here of, of <laughs> trucks that are never going to make like the, the right. <laughs> um, signs that I've paid stupid too much money, a skateboard that I paid over a hundred dollars for just because <laughs> I to put Nissan on my wall. So at the end of the day, you ask these questions is because I'm stupid and I have a limited budget that I keep throwing money at. I don't know. I don't know, Jason. I can't oh, answer passion, question, I think is what you're trying to say. Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm with you too. Like I, that's all the time. It's like, I feel like no matter where I go, Toyota guys are like, huh, Xterra, yep. you're cheap, whatever. You know what? Why didn't you just get a four runner? Why didn't you get an FJ cruiser? Or like even Honda, like, you know, and, and I'm pretty transparent with it. Like I would say seriously, and this is 100% honest truth. Like if I was going to buy a vehicle that I was going to keep forever, Like, I think from my ranking standpoint, like a Toyota is probably one of the best built vehicles around. Mm -hmm. I think the Honda is really close to that. So like, you know, I mean, within like a couple percent, right? Like I think they're both really well built vehicles, but here's the thing. Both of those vehicles are, all the vehicles that Toyota makes or that Honda makes are boring as hell. They're boring. They have no heart. They have no soul. They've been engineered to the point where, 
there is just there's nothing original there's nothing quirky there's nothing interesting about them oh, okay and, it's like modern music today so modern sure. music is so well done autotune has killed modern music but sure. we, we strive to perfection sometimes the the highlights are the the whoopses or the the, the path that you didn't plan to go down, you know, yeah. and, and yeah, you're definitely right of like, they've strived to such perfection that they've taken the fun and sometimes out of vehicles. Yeah. Well, and like, I would argue too, that like the Nissans are, so if you put, you know, I mean, and if you can't see me right now, if you're listening on the podcast, like I have my hands like a half an inch apart to show Toyota and then Honda right below it. I would say the Nissan is like just about the same amount below Honda. Like it's, here's the thing is it's a percentage game, right? So right. like, to your point, GM's like, okay, GM and Ford, they've come up a bit, right? Like mm-hmm. all the domestics have come up in their quality, but they've come up from like, you know, where they used to have 50 or 60 or 80% of their cars have massive failures to right. where they have 50% now or right. 40% now. Whereas like Hondas and Toyotas maybe have been in like the 80, 90, 95% range. And I think Nissans have been in like the 70 to 80% range. Right. So when you look at that, like, and I've said this a million times on my channel, but like when I bought my Xterra, granted I had the Nissan bias, but like I was looking at like 99 through 02 forerunners and they have like 150 to 200,000 miles on those things. And they wanted 10 to 12 grand. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely paid that Toyota tax. So yeah, it's again, not to have, like throw any hate at anybody else. Like there are tons of people that love tons of different types of vehicles. And there are tons of people that have had Chevys or Pontiacs and they've run to 250, 300,000 miles. So don't get me wrong. But again, the way that I look at it is it's a percentage game, right? Like yeah. if I can consistently say, okay, Nissan's 70 to 80% of the time are great. And okay, Toyotas are 90% of the time are great, but it costs me twice as much for a Toyota. Like the Nissan makes perfect financial sense. Oh yeah. And, and forerunner guys now, and, and not to dog on, <clears throat> you know, overlanders that drive forerunners cause that's sure. awesome. And I, a ton of them. I, I love forerunners. Don't get me wrong, man. The, the mid 95, somewhere in there. I love that old forerunner, yeah. but you know, it's hard to justify, especially now the new forerunners, the oh, price yeah. that they want for them. And it's a 10 year old design. Now Nissan for the, the, the frontier gets all kinds of hate for it. It's, it's on its 15th year of this design. And granted, it is, it is deserved that it gets this hate. But the, the Forerunner, is, that's a pretty old platform for them to still get premium money for. Yeah. And it's got a gas-guzzling you know, motor that, that's horrible. Or then they swap in the new Tacoma, which I'm a fan of. I love the design of the Tacoma yeah. to sit in one. And if you're not my height, I'm 5'8", for those who care. It's perfectly for me, but you get over my height, and it's the most uncomfortable thing to sit in. It's got a a dog of a motor, and and I know Toyota fanboy is going to – they'll stand up for that motor and be like, oh, no, it's great. It's a dog. It's underpowered. It's it's all tech, no go in that thing. And, yeah, crawl control and all those things are fun, but at the end of the day, for for, I think for true adventures – it's not about the gadgets in that vehicle. It's not about being able to push a button and it keeps you going down a hill at three mile an hour or, or going up whatever. It's about, I'm old school of give me an old transfer case that I can manually shift it. And I know it's in (laughs) and maybe an automatic transmission and I'm plenty happy anymore. Um, And I don't have to, with, with a lot of the Nissan vehicles, I don't have to pay God, you know, I, what I would say a 10 four runners, probably still 20 grand or more. Oh, at least. Yeah. Um, and I can go get a 10 Xterra for six to $8,000 and yeah. go have fun on the trails. Maybe then I can buy the, the expensive max tracks or whatever that outfit uh-huh. my vehicle a little, a little better than, but I think ultimately though, Nissan people we're different anyways. And, and not to like, I had fun with the cheapness part, but, I think especially Xterra people, the Xterra looks so different versus anything else. Yeah. There's people that don't want to be in the the same cookie cutter mold and nothing against people that love Toyota or, or sure, whatever, track. you know? Yeah. They're all great vehicles. But for me, I just, like I said earlier, I'm an underdog guy. So I kind of like that Nissan's always an underdog. Um, I love the JDM heritage that they have with the be the Z's or, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, and I, I know Toyota has some of that, and and obviously GM has heritage with the Vet 
in, in those things. But I don't know, man. I just, I just, I want to be different and it's not like a weird millennial. I want to be different. It's a, I don't want to be, I, you know, vehicles are vehicles are how you see yourself in life generally. Car people. And so, yeah. And so I don't want to be, you know, I work out when I can, but I don't want to be that gym rat. That's that sure. I got these big muscles, but at the end of the day, we go to the same kind of house. We all sleep eight to nine hours. And you know what I mean? Like, Perfect. I just want to be different. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm on my the exact same cat. thing. Cat. Hold on a minute. <laughs> See the cat. <laughs> you grab the cat. I'm grabbing a beer. For those that don't know, Nissan invited Dave on the Nissan Titan adventure recently to check out the 2020 Nissan Titan. Mm-hmm. And as I told you multiple times, I'm super jealous, but how awesome was that thing? Well, so I've been on a few trips from, with Nissan and um, that's the one thing is like, I'm, I'm a weird hybrid. I'm a, I'm a journalist, but yet I'm an enthusiast of the brand too. So they like the new way of media is, is, is different. And you know, that's why car magazines and stuff are dead now is because people don't want to, they don't want some snooty dude telling you about some vehicle that they could care less about. They want to know what the enthusiasts, like if I type in something on YouTube about a Nissan, it's because for one, I want to know about that particular thing. I don't want car and drivers 45, you know, they put the Nissan center against whatever subcompacts are out there. Like I want to know what I want to know. So, so the new way of doing things in, and I think Nissan, especially their old, their old PR team, you know, there's been a lot of changeover in the past couple of months, but their old PR team was, they, they didn't have a ton of money to spend. And, and if you're a Nissan fanboy, you, you see the same ad that we all see. It's a, it's a Nissan Rogue and Altima. And then you, you see it, it's this weird dealership. And then at the end of the commercial, it's got every car they've got in the background. Yeah. And, and why that is, is because Nissan doesn't have the money that other brands have sure. uh, previous previous uh leadership had a plan what they called the 88 plan it was like eight percent margins uh i forget eight percent market value something it was some silly plan but what it did was it ran nissan so thin at making money that they couldn't they couldn't afford to you know test new ways of doing ads so these marketing teams have come up with these cool things like the titan adventures where they grab journalists and they mix them in with, with enthusiasts that they mostly find off Instagram. Okay. And they, they bring them out and they want the journalists to see how excited these enthusiasts are for, uh, for the vehicles, especially like the 2020 Titan when we got to drive that vehicle before anybody else did. Like, like we were, there was three waves. There was a major press wave. Then there was my my press wave and then there was a uh, dealers at the end got to do with the oh. trip and so in november i was i was driving a 2020 titan they weren't they just showed them at uh, i think end of october at the um oh the texas state fair where a lot of trucks are premiered hmm. um so it was a big deal and it was a big deal for me because for one being a hybrid is like the options are kind of slim for me like i'm not full press i don't cover all the brands so I, at sometimes i'm too nissan so nissan's like well there's not a ton of value there for us um but through doing this with the nissan brand for 12 13 years whatever it is now i have a pretty loyal following and that's not being me being arrogant and and sure that's just me being honest that me and Danny both, we have a pretty good following and like we have the ears of, of, I can't go in. I'm not going to tell you I can shape the market by any means, but I can definitely tell you I can shape aftermarket. Sure. Like there's, if me and Danny see something and we did it within the Nissan when they did the destination frontier. So your overland community should love this. They seen destination frontier. Yeah. <clears throat> Nissan showed that for under what I think it was $40,000. They built an overland rig a frontier. Yeah. Um, and previously Nissan had been outfitting their vehicles, whether it be mountain patrol or some of the stuff with some unreputable companies like Cal mini and some oh, companies yeah. that's just treated, treated, they've treated their customers 
badly. And this yeah. it's because it's Nissan, we don't have a ton of options. They get away with it. Yeah. So there's times like that when I'm able to shift some thinking within Nissan of like, Hey, don't, don't go with this company because they have like, right. you don't realize you're trying to win over your own audience and you're like, you're pissing your own audience off because <laughs> you're putting crap on it that they would never buy. Yeah. So these trips, we get invited because once again, we're, we're tweeners. We, yeah. we will do, I'll write about it. If you can go to our website, we're starting to do more blogs on there. Um, but we're doing more YouTube coverage and just within forums, stuff like that. So we get invited to that we got, the first one we went to was in Wyoming, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah. They sent us out to test the XD, the Nissan Titan XD. And we got to do a bunch of snowmobiling and just fun stuff. Yeah. It was, it was in Jackson Hole and then just over the, the state line at Idaho is where we, we were in these amazing cabins. Huh. <laughs> and cool. yeah, and Danny and me, we get us together, especially, man, we're going to make everybody have a good time. <laughs> I'm, naturally, I can be an introvert. So, and Danny's like way on the other side. <laughs> you put us together and That's like, new. like literally yeah. we're a normal. Yeah, we're a normal person when you put us together. So, <laughs> Nissan likes that though. They like that we came out. We did the 2020 trip. I got to, to test drive the truck with a new nine speed transmission in it, which I will say is fabulous. And I, I do mean that I didn't personally have a problem with the seven speed, but the new nine speed is amazing. And it's going to be in some future vehicles that you're going to really like. Um, so I don't know. There's Nissan sees value in some of the things like this, like bringing enthusiasts yeah. Overlanders, especially, they know there's value in that because they go to Expo West all the time. Well, I know we've had talks. You asked me how how you can get on these things, but yeah, I need to be on this this stuff, all of it. <laughs> but but as, as I kind of get to my point of Nissan doesn't have a lot of money. Yeah, so you don't they're have looking to pay for me anything. No, but but these trips are based come. on it. These trips don't ultimately they're expensive, but they don't for a, a global company they don't cost anything for them to right. do. And they, they do get a little bit of buzz. Now, yeah. they don't get as much buzz as – I don't think the, the true journalists give it enough attention that it should. Yeah. But I know there was talks of them doing it with the Frontier that's coming up. So they're, they're definitely um, – they're looking for ways to market themselves without – you know, like I, like I said, social media is the new advertising. Right. When, yeah. well, like your channel here, man. You do a lot of, you know, product reviews and stuff. Uh, there's sure. value in that. And there's value in it because people like your personality or they like my personality. And once again, I'm not being cocky about, Hey, you know, we, sure. we've, we've gathered all these people, but they just, for some reason, they liked me and Danny's personality and right. so we, whatever, we get invited to these trips and they are a blast. I, I will not lie. Like the, the open bar <laughs> was amazing. Um, okay. Me and Danny, the last, when we were at this, resort in um park city utah open bar and and i mean not that we're getting sloshed but we're having a good time and enjoying right. the the top shelf liquor <laughs> and they had a they had a little guy with a fender since fender audio is doing in the new titan yeah fender brought out a little little artist he was singing cover songs or whatever but him and his fender acoustic and it had fender audio everywhere and they were kind of doing entertainment our last night and night we just instantly get out of all the crowd singing with them. And like, the, you can see the dude was so happy. And Nissan, one of the reps came up to me. He's like, guys, we're so happy that you're here doing this because they're like, when we had just the press, they literally sat there and ate their meal. Didn't pay oh, any attention to that guy. And yeah. the, you know, I'll say this too. These uh, YouTube pages like yours or YouTube channels like yours are there's they're worth their weight in gold because they're passionate the press anymore they're so spoiled by these trips and if, yeah, if, yeah. if you guys ever get to just see how well the press is treated to write a paragraph about a it, it's it's stupid expensive for that paragraph yeah they're 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 prima donnas and i will tell you this they'll all stab you in the back as soon as they can too oh yeah well that's like this was off camera but earlier we were talking about this and i was like i just want to find like a good local brewery right? They would give me like a couple of cases a month and I would put them on all my videos and I would talk about how great they are. And I would like take their beers out to people like at meetings and stuff. Like that's exactly how I feel about Nissan, you know, but more so because I have, you know, a 20 year history with them. Mm -hmm. 
where it's like, you know, you just, you love a product because of its quirkiness. You love a product because of its quality. And it's like, yeah, I, I definitely think that new micro influencer thing is a huge missed opportunity by a lot of bigger companies. Well, you know, to, so this last trip, they brought out some major influencers and I'm talking people with, I won't say, I guess not major in the, in the Kim Kardashian sense, but <laughs> people that had 50 to 200 K followers on Instagram. So, so if they post something, there's value in it, right? Sure. The influencers that they brought out could have cared less. Just, it it, it was a joke, which puts more value into if you guys listening think, Oh man, my Instagram, nobody's paying attention. I guarantee you, I've, I've seen, I've seen the board within Nissan HQ where they track it by the minute social media and and hashtags mean everything guys on instagram so anytime you hashtag nissan titan or nissan frontier something like that guess what it's statistics is is information and it's gold and they can sit here and they're they're looking for ways to change the market so they're watching and that's how a lot of these people on the original titan adventures got invited was just by using a hashtag and they were excited they showed a happy fun picture about their vehicle yeah. And Nissan reached out to him and I was hit up by so many of these people going, Dave, I don't think this is really Nissan hit me up. Why would they hit me up? <laughs> and I'm like, because you show you were excited about your vehicle, man. And, and you know, they're looking for that. Um, yeah. Once again, you know, they could advertise on Jimmy Fallon show or whatever. And yeah, you're, you're reaching, you're reaching a bunch of people, but you're not reaching your target audience. Right. And I think today, and I think that's why overlanding is, is done real well is because like companies like CVT who, who Bobby yeah. is an awesome dude. There's a specific audience that that guy reaches or wants to reach Yep. overlanding for whatever reason, like the timing was so strange because before 2010, 11, nobody knew what overlanding was. They seen, they seen safari travel and stuff like that. Yeah. But all these companies hit at the right time and they found their, their right market. Um, people like putting things together. So vehicles, it makes sense that I want to add a max tracks to the side of my vehicle, or I want to make my vehicle, the zombie, you know, walking dead (laughs) zombie apocalypse. Oh, that was so huge in the Xterra world around then where everybody was rebadging their vehicle, like zombie, whatever. I never got that. I didn't either, man. But, but (laughs) uh, who am I to say? I'm, I have a juke for God's sakes. What do I know? But, but at the end of it, at the end of it, man, I know you like, you would like to be invited to trips like that. Oh, sure. In the end of the day, and I'll, I'll leave it at this. If you have a problem with a car manufacturer and you're out there posting crap going, this is the biggest piece of shit car I've ever had. Why they built this? I'll never know. Yeah. Um, they're never, you're, they tune you out. I did an interview oh, with, sure. I did an interview with Brett Hagen around episode 70, somewhere in there, who was a product planner for Nissan. He's like, look, man, we watch every Facebook page. They're and believe it or not, they're in there. And I Fletch, I guarantee you, there there's somebody within Nissan that's liked your page. Yeah. Nice. That they have people everywhere that, that are just comments. watching things. They'll never comment right. because they can't comment. If if they comment and said, "Oh, sir, we'll fix that right for you," could you imagine like the hundreds oh of people that hit them up? Yeah. But what they do is they screen capture everything, and yeah. they go, "Here's here's where we take it to our bosses. Here's what the market kind of wants." You know, the bean counters get involved and then they go, well, can we, you know, make it work for a price? But when, when people are ugly and, and they don't offer positive criticism, right? like you're never going to get invited to any of these trips. And probably if you're that type of person anyways, and you go up to one of these large overland meets like Expo East or West, you're probably not somebody they want to hang out with. Anybody really wants to hang out with. So, so I don't know, man, once again, Guys, I apologize for uh, being, I know these are long-winded answers, um, but th- I'm super passionate about vehicles, yeah. and then you you on on top of it, and I'm just a nut. Yeah, no, I, that's, we're both equally guilty of that, I think. So, to wrap it up, I will ask you one final question. <laughs> so, you're expecting a 45-minute answer is what this yes. is mean. We need to wrap this up before midnight Eastern time. <laughs> um, so you have this channel, right? And you've talked mm-hmm. a lot about Nissan and, you know, you've gotten to go on the Titan Adventure, which is awesome. But like long term, what are the goals for your channel? Like where are you trying to take the channel? What, are you, what kind of content do you want to make? And what are the goals 
for your channel, your YouTube channel specifically? Well, it's kind of a twofold. So on the Nissan side, I definitely want to get into more product reviews. Now being a, you know, a lot of, a lot of car review guys, they have a global cars to choose from. Well, I have one brand to choose from. So right. it's not like every week I'm getting a new Nissan out in my driveway to, uh, to do a long-term test with or anything. Um, but I do want to get into more of that. And honestly, for me to do that, I just need to get a larger audience, which, which like we all, you know, even somebody with a hundred thousand subs, there's a level that they got to reach to get to the next point. Right. And so I know within me, within Nissan, the way they view me is they right now they you're an, I'm viewed as an influencer. Okay. Uh, they don't take my journalism part as seriously as maybe they should. Uh, but it's stupid is once you get to a certain sub count, Oh, suddenly you're in that we take you seriously for this part of it. Yes. Um, so I would like to see the channel grow to just, just get more, not attention from Nissan, but just to get like, I can get cars from them. And I, I did a, the last one I did was a 2020 Versa. Yeah. Uh, they dropped it off at my house. You know, I did, I did my, um, Sorry, now my dog's in here. Uh, I did a, a, a little review on it. Uh, the 2020 twi Titan, the Titan I've been waiting to, to have dropped off here. Even though I've drove it already, I would like to do a, a week's long drive of it to see if, do I really find changes from the previous generation? Um, yeah. I want to write more. Uh, I'm, I'm horrible at writing, don't get me wrong. So, <laughs> so I know that's, that doesn't sound right, but I really... So for, for the channel, I want to see, I'm bring and I'm doing it now. I'm bringing in kind of staff writers for the website that, uh, cause I want different opinions. I obviously I've guided the voice of the, the Nissan nation where it is now, but I want to bring it. There's, there's, there's a, we found a, a kid named Andrew. He, uh, Atlanta, Georgia doesn't own a Nissan. He's got a Pontiac G6 that his, you know, he bought oh. as a high school kid and yeah, horrible car. Poor kid. Um, he loves the Nissan Zs, man. Much like you, Fletch. He just, he loves Zs and he's near Z1. So he tried to get, he's trying to get on with Z1. He, um, excellent writer. And, and I'm, I'm hoping to post one of his articles up this week. Um, nice. there's a guy in Canada, uh, you can find his YouTube channel. It's uh Tim, the car guy, I believe is his uh, YouTube channel. He's going to do some stuff for me every once in a while. He's a great writer too. Um, we're doing stuff like the unique rides. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. So we've only got two episodes of that out right now, but it's where me and Danny want to take, and I want to fly out. I want the channel to be able to pay for me to fly out to wherever you are in America, Japan, wherever. I want to, I want to do a video segment on your car. If you've modified it, talk, why did you do it? Uh, whether it be your car or truck. And then at the end of it, I want to drive your vehicle and give my impressions of it. Now, I'm not yeah. going to crap all over it, but I want to go, here's what I would have done. Um, this isn't for me, but this wasn't built for me. This was built for him. And I just want to showcase Nissan guys. There's a, so many shade tree mechanics out there that do amazing work yeah. that that deserve recognition. And now, at the end of the day, yeah, I want my, will I profit from this? Of course I would, because the YouTube channel, you know, that's the end all be all for all of our media companies is to be profitable because I don't want to be a land surveyor all my life. Fletch, I don't, whatever you do, I'm sure you don't want to do that all your life. You want to right. have fun and kind of pick and choose what you want to do. Control your future. So, right. Yes, exactly. So if the channel could just pay for trips where we can do these things, where I can get more product reviews. Um, we want to cover Nissan, more Nissan uh, fan events, like uh, Nismo Fiesta in San Antonio, Texas. Um, there's my own event that I do, my own Nissan off-road event. Um, and these are all merging together. Uh, but that's kind of the end all be all. I want to grow this thing. Um, it's not for me and Danny. There's a new channel we're about to launch called uh, Truck Life Podcast or Truck Life Media, as we may rebrand it, huh. where we we're spreading the we're taking the formula that we've done with the Nissan world and we're gonna go to all brands. So that's kind of I would say 
that sounds horrible being a Nissan show that, oh, you want to jump to other ones. But at the end of the day, for me to do this for a living, I'm going to have to cover the other brands. And Nissan's allowed me to do that, though. So if the long story short, if the Nissan channel keeps growing, I'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Fletch is instantly, for you those watching, Fletch is like, I can see his face. He's instantly like, why did I bring this guy on here? <laughs> you got me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that was Dave from uh, Nissan Nation Podcast. So thanks for watching. Uh, it was a great interview, and I'm really looking forward to, you know, hopefully meeting up with him in person at the next auto show or Nissan event. So Nissan, if you're listening, hit me up. I'm ready. Um, so check the description below for links to his channels and definitely go and check him out. Um, and again, if you're not already subscribed to All Things Overlanding, check me out and subscribe now.